Welcome to podcast number 192. Have you always wanted an online safety platform built by field builders for field builders? Well, today's your lucky day. Stay with us. We have a wonderful guest with us. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're enjoying the podcast episodes, the interviews, and the concepts. Uh, it's so much fun for me to participate in this podcast. We're, we're getting a lot of really good feedback. A lot of people enjoying it on their way to work. And I'm so grateful for the way that this is scaling right now. And we've had some really cool uh, guests. And so we have Caitlin Frank with us uh, here today from Emod Safety. Uh, Caitlin, anything you want to say as a welcome to our guest today? I'm just really excited to be here and have this conversation with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, so actually, just to get like break the ice a little bit, I was being a dirtbag. She reached out to me. She and uh, who was your partner that reached out to me? Bobby or Chris? It was yeah. It was either Bobby or Chris. And I was so you, you know you Caitlin and I we get bombarded with that's not an excuse, but we get bombarded with stuff every day. And I it was kind of I missed two meetings, which is totally against the personal organization and responsibility and discipline podcast that I've done. And I just realized this application has the uh, sounds like it's going to go all the way and so I had a moment where I repented of my sins and called called you back and it's been fantastic ever since you did a, a demo for a, a company that I was working with and also one for me and I didn't see a single thing in there that I hadn't been asking for for years probably that's why you made it right it's the same thing yeah. for you and I didn't see a single thing in there that that freaked me out from a uh, standpoint of it being too burdensome. You know what I mean? There's so many things out there where you're like, mm, I'm not going to fill in 75 <laughs> points of That's data. Entry. Here. <laughs> so I loved it. Anyway, I told Caitlin, we're going to answer this question. I'm going to talk about what I'm excited about in life right now. So before this podcast, I've been spending most of the day and yesterday and the rest of this week, finishing a book that I think we're going to call Elevating Tact Planning, uh, which which brings flow and uh, rhythm and stability to our scheduling systems on project sites. And so really excited about that, hoping that's out in April. I think I'm going to get to do a webinar on the Lean blog uh, webinar series and do a blog post. So I'm hoping it's ready by then. But that's what I'm excited about because so many people ask about tact planning and last planner and scrum and things like that. And there just needs to be good information out there. So that's what I'm excited about. Caitlin, what, uh, what are you excited about in life right now? Anything? Anything in life? I would say, you know, the past few years, I've been really trying to focus on our superintendents and how do we bring them up? How do we help support them? Everything always just seems so office focused and, you know, our superintendents are on an island. And so over the last year, I've been working on what we call, you know, our superintendent boot camp but it's a boot camp in the sense of an onboarding boot camp. How do we get them up to date with what they need to know? How do we make them successful before we send them out to the field? And so I've been working on that and I'm really hoping to roll that out this year. That's awesome. I wish you the best of luck. Those, those types of events are so impactful and getting them immersed in, in that onboarding, as you called it, is just huge. So I hope that I bet you a lot of people are cheering you on with that. And I bet that's going to be kind of a trend, um, which ties into a question that I'm going to ask in a minute, which is, what do you see changing in the industry? But first, uh, I, I always like to talk about listeners and, and fans of the podcast and feedback that we're getting. I take feedback, whether it's feedback for improvement or it's positive. So here's one. Uh, I just had a personal coaching session with Jason Schroeder at Elevate Construction and have to tell you, it was the best hour I spent focusing on my professional life in a very long time. This is, this is hard to say, but Jason's as good as it gets when it comes to listening and asking the right questions, ultimately leading to incredible, insightful guidance. Uh, do yourself a favor and give him a shout. So that one's more personal. That's not spot, podcast specific, but we talk a lot about personal coaching. And so um, the person who posted this, I just want to say thank you. Everyone who reaches out on the podcast, uh, by email or text or whatever. It's just great. So, uh, Caitlin, let's get right to it. What do you see? And I'm not going to answer this because I want your vision for this 100%. What do you see changing in the industry? I think after the last year we've had, you know, safety is now such a hot priority for everyone. Mm -hmm. And safety in the sense of actual job site safety, making sure that our full crews understand what's going on. I also think it's going to rework the way we, we're going to rethink the way we work in the sense of what can we prefab offsite? Yeah. What do we not have to expose everyone to? How do we minimize how long people are exposed to different people? And 
let's stop trade stacking everyone on top of each other. Yeah, man, I love that. You're, you're speaking my love language. I, 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 it's funny, the concepts of like the superintendent boot camp you're doing, uh, pr- creating those remarkable environments, that's something I'm passionate as well. So I really appreciate you coming on today. That's great. Now I'd like you to do, can you do, I know this is awkward for people that are um, on the podcast to talk about themselves because you're probably more humble than that. But if you give a little bit of background into yourself, maybe some of the accolades and achievements that you're most proud of, and then what you're, so that's a lot. I do this to guests all the time, but, and what you're passionate about. Uh, if, if you could give us a little introduction, that'd be great. Perfect. All right. So I am Caitlin Frake. I am a co-founder of Emod, and I am also a superintendent for Dome Construction. Kind of my background. So I started out, I grew up on a job site. My dad owned a general contracting business back in Boston. And I sat on a launch pail and I asked him, why, how come? And I did it from day one. I can't say much has changed recently. I still probably sit on a job site. I've you know, grown off the lunch pail. At least I get a chair now. But I'm still <laughs> asking trade partners why and how come. And so I knew I, I always knew I wanted to go into the industry and I actually thought I wanted to be an architect. So I went to school, got a degree in architecture, but halfway through I realized I had these nightmares of zooming in and out of AutoCAD, changing line weights to wake up in the morning to realize that they weren't changed. And I was, this is not for me. I am not a desk person. I need to be out in the field. Yeah. I also knew that's the way I learned. So I went back to school, got my master's in CM and right out of school, just went right to the field. I knew that's where I belonged where I felt most comfortable, where I could ask questions and actually see what was going on. So I've been in the field ever since. I mean, my passions outside of work are very few. I fully enjoy being in the field. It's just, that's where I'm comfortable. I've, uh, I've spoken at a few conferences and I've talked to people and I've made people in the front rows put on safety vests because that, you know, bright orange safety vest is a bit of a security blanket for me. It's, <laughs> these are my people, I understand them. I understand the frustrations that they go through. And, you know, I've worked my way up through the field and I never thought I'd get to be a superintendent working on the level of projects that was so fast. That's awesome. And it's a, it's a wonderful experience because your passion, one of the things you were telling me before we signed on was the optimization of people in the field, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you know, everything going on in the world right now, you know, everyone is struggling. Everyone is, they're tired and you know, one of the reasons that I was so passionate about EMOD was because I care about people and their well-being. I want people to go home safe. You can go home dirty, you can go home tired, but I want them to go home safe. And I want to think about people in that manner. With everything going on right now, we constantly, at least in the office world, we're talking about Zoom fatigue and how this is impacting people, people working at home with children. You know, these are struggles. But what about the people that actually have to go out to the job sites every day? Yeah. What are their frustrations? You know, we're probably going to hear masks and safety glasses, you know, trying to work on something that you would typically work with someone else, and trying to find a piece of equipment to help you do it so you're not having to work side by side. Yeah. They have frustrations too. My heart goes out to them. There's people struggling no matter where you're working right now and there's a passion behind it. That's awesome. I love that vision. And so I appreciate that introduction. You've already said the name of your company, which is a question I was going to ask you. So the, can you tell me, how did you get started with this? So we'll talk about what it is here just in, in a minute. But basically, uh, the way I look at it, and it, so let, let me do this as a little bit of a test. What you demonstrated for me is a platform, it's an application yep. that makes safety manageable and easy to where we're actually doing it remarkable and relevant ways. That's how I would, I would describe it. Um, you'll, you'll have a chance to, to explain that, but how, how did you get started with that? What was the vision there? There was, you know, we had talked about, so at our company, at Dome, you know, we talk about, we call our pre-mobilization safety plans JAJs. So before our subcontractors come on site, they're supposed to, you know, provide us with their JAJs, their site-specific plans. And we couldn't, unless we were going into each individual project folder, we couldn't confirm that that was happening. There was no transparency out there. You know, our CEO would ask our safety department, you know, can you confirm compliance? And they would say, our teams know what's expected, but they couldn't actually confirm that compliance. It wasn't there. They would spend weeks going to job sites, pulling binders, going through box, trying to pull everything together. It wasn't there for them. And then as a superintendent, what I was dealing with was more of our, our daily safety plans, our pre-task plans. Mm-hmm. I was chasing people around what to, for what felt like administrative like check the box. These were just pencil whipped documents that no one actually understood 
what they were filling out, why they were filling it out, what content we were looking for. Okay. It was just, how quickly can I fill this out, get past it and just get to work. And to the guy who was just sweeping in the corner all day or pouring concrete and they didn't, they weren't actually looking at this. They weren't involved. It wasn't protecting them. So I really wanted to find a way to protect them. I have my right hand man, Santiago, who is my go-to guy. And when I saw that he was, you know, he was trying to help me and he was trying to chase people around and I wasn't actually doing my job. You know, he would go get wow. them for me. I would look at them and say, no, 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 they got to revise this. They got to fix this. This isn't correct. He'd send it back. Like, we're just wasting so much time in the field. And so that the lack of transparency, the just administrative checking the box, it was enough for us to say, hey, we need to make a change and we need to find something. And we couldn't yeah. find something out there for us. And then, so you developed it. So kudos to you. That's, that's amazing. And then, so now the key is to get that message out, which I hope today will do that. And, um, you know, the positive thing is, I, our, our, and I'm being serious about this, the number of downloads increases every month. And usually there's a one week to, to a three month buffer, maybe, maybe lag time between people hit when people hit the episodes. And so I'm hoping that in whether it's right away or in three months, I hope that five, six, 10,000 people hear this message because I was super impressed. I, in fact, I was telling, for those listening, I was telling Caitlin, I'm bummed that I don't I get to run projects directly because I, I don't know if I would have killed for it, but I would have done a lot. I would have done a lot. I would have paid any amount of money for this. And you know, the other thing is there's, there's so many, I have to say this, I'm just going to be me. There's so many applications out there, so many programs that are super expensive. I remember somebody uh, advertising a, a lean platform uh, for the last planner and they were like oh it's an 80 million dollar job we'll charge you like 75 grand i'm like whoa, 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 man. <laughs> did you just say 75 grand and i was i'm not gonna we're not gonna give any pricing out because that's between you and the customers but i was really blown away at how affordable it was and so if somebody's got that like oh we're talking about this on a podcast why are we doing are they sponsor oh the other thing is caitlin is not paying me for this. There's no sponsorship here. Uh, it really was that fantastic that I reached out to her. So the pricing is really good. So anybody listening, we have to make sure that we're getting past that and at least have the conversation. And and don't do like I did, waste your time on meetings and not showing up, actually get in there because it's pretty fantastic. So will you talk about, Caitlin, uh, what, what does this do? Uh, it's probably going to be pretty hard to do that high level unless you're used to it now. But what does this application do and how does it benefit people? So our application, so we have a field app, you know, specifically meant for our field crews, very high level, simple use. Then we have our web application, which is more meant for the management. So we've divided it into two because we know, you know, office people have computers. We know our field crews, you know, they probably have a tablet or an iPhone. That's about it. What we tried to do is everything, every document that you have in the field ties back into a dashboard. So your onboarding, your orientations, your pre-mobilization safety plans, your crew profiles, so tracking certs and trainings, silica exposure. Um, we have our daily pre-task plans, so your daily site plans. We have audits and observations, incident reports, kind of everything that you would need, including our COVID checklist now too, um, which we are, do plan on you know, revamping, hopefully once this is you know, moved on, to a more of a fit for duty. So we're trying to bring everything that you have in the field and bring it into one dashboard where you can utilize everything, look at it at a company level, look at it at a project level, individual level, really break it down into multiple ways. I love that. And one of the things that I saw was if you had some, and I'm not saying it's entirely like this, but if I had an actual physical piece of paper, right, mm -hmm. uh, that was a pre-task plan or silico ex exposure plan or, or, your, or the actual JHA for high risk, uh, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, operations, sorry, I'm stumbling on myself, then that's easy. It's right there, right there directly. And a lot of applications, uh, there's uh, an, an entry form, two or three steps that you got to, and it's just not connected, right? When I looked at your interface, it's right there. It's intuitive, just like you would pick it up if it was an actual piece of paper. I thought it was pretty uh, fantastic. And so, and I'd like to see if this spawns any conversation on your end and interrupt me, kick me on the scene if you want me to stop. But the reason it's important to me to talk about what you just brought up was we've all seen the studies where the, the effectiveness of the orientation as that goes up, that mm -hmm. accidents and recordables go down, right? Yeah. So a remarkable way to do onboarding and orientation, right? And then what happens next? If somebody's onboarded, 
and they're ready to go to work. If the superintendent and the foreman don't know what they're qualified to do, you're going to send them to go install that type of deck form work or work on that walls. And they're not trained to do that. Were you going to say something? No, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just riffing over here. So, so what I'm saying is like, if that could be easily, the crew composition, like you said, easily accessible so that we have visual indicators, we have data showing what they're trained to do so that nobody's sent into a situation that's impossible. Because even if there are workers that will speak up and say, hey, time out, I'm not qualified for that. It's like 10, 20%, if that. Like Nobody's gonna say, I'm not gonna go do that. They're gonna go get, do their best efforts because they get paid to, right? So that's fantastic. Pre-task plans, what a waste of time unless we actually do it right and they get audited. I mean, my goodness, in your system where they get filled out and immediately you have access and it's real time before they start the work, or before they change the work or during the work as an audit, you know, as a spot check and they actually get done right, man, like not only is that going to prevent the wasted time that we're, we're uh, expending right now, not doing it the right way with paper, but there are checks in there to see how we're doing so that we can keep that trend. Going. I could just go on and on. I, my, I, my point is this, um, I hate waste. Uh, and you know that about me and I, and I know that about you. Why do something if it's not going to be real? And so the way I see EMOD is it takes these processes which are needed, which have historically not been implemented, which workers now don't take seriously, and it puts it into a platform that is kind of like I say, it's as uh, addictive as Facebook, useful as YouTube, and as quick as Wikipedia, right? I, I know there were two or three times where I was cutting you off there. What did you want to say in response? I'm sorry. I was going to say, you know, when you talk about it, it's easy to use, the simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. You know, when we test EMOD, we're not testing it with the most tech savvy superintendents. We're testing it with laborers, with carpenters, with plumbers. We're going out to the field to actually say, where would you click next? Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to make sure that it was field friendly. And we really keep sticking to the, our guns of, it was built for the field, by the field. Yeah. You know, we don't want to be that next tech company that you know, doesn't know anything about our users. You know, our entire team, for the most part, is you know, we are contractors. Yeah. You know, we have a DevOps team, but we are contractors at heart. So we use it day in and day out. And then we are also help building it more. Um, so it's been really useful. When you were talking about pre-task plans, if I could only show you the things that I've been handed over the years. <laughs> of pencil whip, I, our CEO, his blood pressure must've gone through the roof. I brought in a whole binder of paper pre-task plans in the beginning of this to show him really what we were receiving in the field. Mm -hmm. And he thought I was joking. You know, There's no way that people are actually filling this out. I had one person who just wrote hundred percent safe across the front of it. And he's like, here you go. Good to go. <laughs> Not the goal. <laughs> Not the goal. You know, and it, th this answers a very specific question. Not only is this affordable, but I deal a lot with mid-sized general contractors, meaning I've worked with these mega companies and mid-sized general contractors tend to like to do business with me, right? The big guys mm -hmm. don't need me all the time, but working at Hensel Phelps, usually like on a normal job, if, and I'm not bad mouthing, Hensel Phelps is a great company, but they, um, they'll have 13 people on a project site. Uh, from my experience, DPR would have nine and other contractors would have eight or nine, right? And the reason mm -hmm. that Hensel Phelps had 13 is because we have an army of field engineers. And so I, on projects, got used to, oh, we need pretest plans checked. You're in charge of level one, two, and three. You're in charge of, you know, the rest of the levels. You're on the site. Before eight o'clock, I want them all checked. And if you have problems, come talk to me, right? And it was partially effective. It was as effective as you can be with paper. But there are so many people that don't have field engineers, don't know what they are, don't have the additional right. staff, have to do their own QC checks alone anyway, and don't have runners to go do that. So exactly. this is a solution right here. And it is, and I would say it ties in perfectly with some of the things that I teach, not to write on your coattails, but uh, on the, in the work orders, in the exhibits for the contracts or the work orders or the work authorizations, I usually have provisions in there that talk about uh, the, the huddles, the last planner meetings, cleanliness, how we're going to deal with it, and that foremen need to have iPads or a form of technology to run these applications. So that's becoming more commonplace, right? Even though, to your point, they're not as adept at using them as we are, which I have to say in my mind is not a classist thing to say. They, they didn't go to university like a lot of people did. 
they're out there using the hands every day. They have different skills, but they're right here. They're equal to us. To your point, I love that you're making it easier for them where they live. Yeah. That's fantastic. I'd like to ask you a question. So we've talked a little bit about what it, so actually let's just do a little bit of business. If somebody wanted to get more information, I'm sure you have a website. Uh, you can do a call as long as they're utilizing your time effectively. Yep. Where can they reach you to talk about this, to get more information? So you can go right to our website, emodsafety.com. And you know, we have a contact us form right there. You can also reach out to my email, kfrank at emodsafety.com. Okay. Fantastic. So my challenge to the group, and we'll get to some more challenges here in just a minute, is please reach out to Caitlin. They're fantastic people. They're high energy, love working with them, and also love the passion. So I've got two more questions before I get into the challenges and uh, some of the more personal things of what I wanted to talk about. So where do you see yourself in this company in five years? You can, even, you can change it, by the way, to one, three, five, 15, whatever, but this has to happen. We need to support you and what you're doing. That's part of the reason why I called back after uh, blowing this off for two, two times, because it was like, if anybody's going to make this, from what I've seen, Emon's going to make this happen. We need to support this. Where do you see yourself being in five years, three years? Myself or the company? The company, both. Well, you're a big part. So let's pick one, whatever you want to say, you'll know best. Um, you know, myself, I think I kind of mentioned it earlier. My goal was to become a superintendent. You know, I, that's all I really wanted to be. And I was lucky enough to be taken under some of the greatest superintendent wings. And I, I made it there pretty fast, faster than I thought I would. And so, you know, myself, now I'm transitioning out of this superintendent position into more of a learning and development field ops position. So I see myself there, but I see myself and EMOD, you know, really growing and adapting to as construction does change, you know? As soon as we think we know something, that's when we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We're gonna mm -hmm. continue to have to adapt. We're gonna have to grow. We are always focused on best practices. So as we continue to focus on best practices and the more and more people we meet, they have these small little tweaks that we can make to help make safety, you know, we wanna make safety easy. We wanna make it that the choice you make, not, we don't wanna make it friction. There's no friction with safety. So if we can make the safe choice, the easy choice, I think we've done our job. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. I'm reading a book and I've mentioned this a couple of times, but uh, I think it's Drift Into Failure. I don't know if you've ever read it, but um, I'm not necessarily recommending it for yeah, as a bestseller, but it's it talks about how companies in complex systems uh, very much drift into failure. And uh, uh, it's it's interesting that they said a lot of times companies will say nothing's going wrong right now, so there's no improvements needed. And that's exactly when they start to get complacent and they drift into a situation where then the plane crashes, then the mountainside comes down, then this disaster happens, right? And I love your focus on continuous improvement and best practices, even when things are going well. So kudos to you on that. That's, uh, it's funny you say that um, because our CEO would always say, are we safe or are we lucky? Yeah. And even though we had great safety ratings before we created EMOD, we didn't have that transparency. So it may have been luck before it was, you know, are we safe? Yeah. I need to meet your CEO. Uh, is it he or she? It's a he. Rob he, Lynch, uh, he, sa he sounds like a remarkable individual, like very wise. Yeah. Seems like you've had some of the best mentors that money can buy. That's fantastic. I've been very lucky. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so the the challenge here, and I'm going to, we're going to go back and forth on this. So I, I usually like to do this. It's a lot of fun. And we'll close. I don't know if I'm taking you too long, but we'll close down in like five minutes here, Caitlin. So uh, current condition, let's talk about it. You do one and then I do one. Okay, I'll start first. So cur current condition right now is that we have people coming out on site and we don't know what they're trained to do. So that was, that was low hanging fruit because I already said that, but it's a big one for me because I want to know that people are fit for duty and also educated for the task. You go. Well, the response you're just, you're just mentioning, mentioning like one, I'm sorry, that was my fault. You're just <laughs> mentioning something that's a current condition on in our industry that's a problem because then we're going to contrast it with your challenge. So what's one thing that you see in the industry that you don't like? Oh, the daily safety plans are just pencil whipped and there's no real meat and potatoes to go with them. People just fly through them because they don't understand what we're asking. Yeah, I, that's, a really, that's a really good observation. One that I uh, see a lot is people will, who are not onboarded. They come in, uh, maybe it's 15 minutes, a quick video, and then they're like, here's your sticker. And you could literally go out to the worker huddle or on site and say, what did you understand of this? And they're like, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what you're talking about. There's that moment where we have them 
as a captive audience and where we can connect as human beings and create that social group. We miss that opportunity um, because we don't have remarkable uh, uh, onboarding and uh, orientations, right? So that's one that I see. I'll t kick it back to you. And we can stop when this gets annoying. I just want to, I just want to yeah. point out the things that we're com you're combating with this. Go ahead. I would just say, you know, people showing up and you know are not knowing what to do when an emergency happens. You know, where do I go? Who do I contact? You know, they think they called the GC. Do they call their own safety compliance? What do they do? They have no idea. One thing that's a current condition is we don't see the rate of, I don't know how to say this, non-implementation. Meaning with your systems, you can see if a project is, I'm just going to throw out some numbers, but 98%, 100%, or 34%. Like, and, and that real-time data will tell us how things are being used so the project team can make real-time decisions. So I don't like in a normal situation not having the facts on how well something's being imp in implemented. Any more from you? I would, I've got one more. Uh, the okay. disconnect <laughs> between, you know, who's signed in on our COVID checklist or whatever the procedure mm -hmm. may be, and who's actually on your pre-task plan, your daily safety plan? Who, who's cross-referencing all that to make sure that everyone has gone through? Yeah. And here's the biggest one for me. And by the way, I think I've set us up pretty well by accident because I've spent 191 podcasts railing on the millions of new tech companies that are just that aren't asking field builders how it should come out that are providing garbage and that reach out to me and waste my time every day, which you are not one of them. Oh <laughs> and, and so if you're on this podcast, like doing this, like that means something right there. So the applications out there that are so focused on gathering data mm -hmm. and they're so complex that we lose the real-time behavioral changes that we're attempting in the field real-time with other human beings. Meaning if, if I get this project management software and they're like, oh, okay, I've got a quality or safety observation tool and I've got to click through 74 different, uh, that's an exaggeration. I've got to click through, uh, so we counted them once, 14 different data fields, which are dependent and hard to use and it's not easy for the sake of collecting data so that that can go to somebody in corporate where no decisions are made and no real feedback loop is there. What I, Ooh, that was another thing I was, so that's the condition I hate. One of the things I liked about you is you were talking about the feedback loops and the data that your teams have daily with this daily and weekly. And I just mm -hmm. love that. So that's my last one. I won't bore us anymore with that, but um, I get so annoyed when, when we, to your point, create, and you didn't do this, you did just the opposite of this, but when people create a software that ties into uh, the database, the platform, the technology that you're using, or the project management team, or the developer's preferences, right? Versus here's what we need, let's, back, let's reverse engineer this thing into what we need in the field, which is exactly what you did. So I'd like to uh, um, just ask you if there's any closing comments and then are there any challenges that you would give to the listeners? And the reason I say that, Caitlin, and I, maybe you already know this about me, I don't mind uh, with trainings charging money. I don't mind with uh, boot camps making sure that there's a little bit of a sacrifice because if there isn't some sacrifice, people don't do much with it. The other thing is if there isn't action, then sure, these podcasts are fun. Uh, but you know, the ultimate idea is to live a remarkable life, right? So I'd love it if you could give our audience a challenge. Would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, you know, I'm from the field. I understand the pain you go through when adopting new technology. You know, we are an old school industry that does not like change and we're asking people to change. Where as the industry grows and we're seeing things, you know, move throughout the industry, it's going to be different the way we viewed construction 10 years ago and the way we view construction in 10 years is going to be so different. So I would say, I understand how hard it is to get field employees to adopt new technology, but do reach out, give us a shot, see what we have um, and see if we can make those best practices that you do have, you know, make them help your field crews, protect that person. My personal goal is that if I can send one person home safe out of everything, everything that I do my entire career that wouldn't have gone home safe. I've done my job. That's awesome. And what, what a beautiful vision. And in closing, the, the vision for that is, I can't even say it better than Caitlin did. If you want to uh, do exactly like she said and be, you know, make a difference and, and prevent that drift into failure, prevent that one person 
from losing their eye or their leg, which, which are not, you know, some people um, criticize those heart wrenching stories and they're like, Oh, you got one of those stories again, but mm, we've all had so many people that have lost that eye. So many people that don't have that range of motion. So many, we, and people that have passed away that it's real enough to where we just don't talk about it enough. And if you want to be somebody that helps prevent that, then uh, join the, the movement there with, with EMOD Safety and reach out to Caitlin. Uh, fantastic people. I highly recommend them. And so I want to say, you know, some direct feedback from you, uh, for you. The things that you say, uh, that it's true builder stuff. And uh, uh, kudos to you for the, for the things that you've accomplished in your career and what you're doing. And uh, just thank you for coming on today. And I just got to say, on we go. Me.